Hello and welcome to HD Live. I'm Mabel Jong. The American Academy of Pediatrics concluded its national conference discussing such impactful topics as caring for children during a pandemic, to advancing child health equity, to hearing Dr. Anthony Fauci's message for the country's pediatricians. For the key takeaways, I'm so pleased to welcome Dr. Elizabeth Murray of the University of Rochester Medical Center and spokesperson for the American Academy of Pediatrics. Dr. Murray, great to see you. Hello, thank you. Well, over 14,000 people attended this year's meeting virtually. A wide array of, array of pediatric care topics were on the schedule. What did people view as key takeaways when the meeting came to a close? I think we were reinvigorated as this annual meeting often does for us, but the key takeaways were certainly continue to advocate to be the voice of children with the election coming up. We have a lot at stake for the health of children, specifically when it comes to Medicaid and Child Health Plus funding. Um, huge focus and very important focus on inclusivity um, and diversity. Uh, we know that racism is a social determinant of health and it's a public health issue. So we spent a great deal of time focusing on that as well. And then certainly the pandemic has impacted not only how we function as pediatricians, but we know it has broad reaching effects in the, the health and welfare of children and their families. Okay, so the conference did lead with programs on racism and immigrant health. What was the call to action specifically? That we need to talk about racism and learn how to be anti-racist and that we all have work to do. Um, and that we also need to identify the trauma that can be experienced by children and, and people of color that's happening on a regular basis throughout this nation, whether it be the overt of violent acts that we see on TV or sometimes some more subtle messages of having a person of color perhaps always be the bad guy on TV shows, that there's a lot we need to watch out for um, and make sure that it's front of mind for us and that we're talking to our families and our children about it um, to, to check and see how they're doing and understanding that this has very real health effects on them to, to see these negative portrayals. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci opened your plenary session. Uh, part of his message emphasized that vaccines for children that addressed COVID-19 must strike a balance. What did he mean by that? Well, we at the American Academy of Pediatrics very much would like to ensure that any COVID vaccine be tested and, and studied on children as well, because they're part of the population who will certainly at some point need to be vaccinated. Um, we have many wonderful vaccines out there, but again, this would be something new. So we want to make sure that uh, children are participating in those studies when appropriate. However, I think his point was really to stress that a vaccine is not magic. It's not going to be the thing that finally makes it all of a sudden go away. Um, we still will have lots of work to do because of the potential months to years it will take to then roll out a vaccine once we have proven one to be safe. So we are going to continue to need to wash hands and physically distance and wear masks and do some of the other things. Um, the vaccine is a wonderful component of the solution, but it is not the solution itself. Mm -hmm. And will the AAP be playing a specific role in consulting on pediatric uh, vaccine trials when that comes around? We've always been uh, happy to help in any way. You know, as, as an agency, it's not something, the AAP is not something that would control any of the vaccine studies or be an official leader in that. Uh, that system is, um, is done completely separate and different from us, but certainly pediatric hospitals have a longstanding history of um, working as uh, research sites, and we anticipate that that would continue. Mm -hmm. Were there specific examples provided by pediatricians that their practices have changed since the pandemic started? Uh, are they Definitely. different in the way they operate under the, under the threat of COVID-19? Definitely. We've seen the full gamut of some offices that have been minimally impacted to some who have unfortunately needed to close. Um, regardless, there was definitely a great flex, if you will, on how business is being conducted from some offices doing uh, drive-through vaccination clinics uh, in the parking lot or making sure kids are getting the flu shot and doing those in the parking lot um, to really staggering how they see patients throughout the day, having the sick visits for part of the day, making sure a deep clean of the entire office is done, and then doing those well-child checks. Throughout all of this, there has been a very clear call that the well-child checks, especially for the younger children, must continue because they are just so 
important to the overall health of the child, not just the vaccines, but looking at developmental growth, looking and see how the family is doing, remembering that having a new baby in your house is really hard anyways, and then you put a pandemic on top of that, and there's lots of reasons for families to be struggling. So making sure we continue that medical home concept and the well child checks has been has been critically important. It's just how we've been doing that has been a little creative in some areas. Have there been uh, numbers uh, that support that uh, that people perhaps are coming back to the pediatricians for those well visits? Are the numbers improving? As we start to see communities have decreases in the COVID uh, illness, we are definitely starting to see things come back. We have had communities that have been able to maintain a relatively high vaccination rate, but unfortunately we have seen some that have dropped down. But again, with these kind of creative approaches, whether it be vaccine clinics at schools, drive through vaccine clinics, um, pretty rapidly we'll be able to get back on top of things. Uh, families want families want to be there. They, far and wide, the overwhelming majority of families know the importance of vaccines. Okay. And are practices turning to the AAP for extra support um, in their pedi pediatric practices during this time? Yes, the AAP has always been able to stand by pediatricians and help when needed, whether it be assistance with uh, legislation for or navigating insurance companies or helping to navigate the waters with regards to some of the, the grants and the, the um, services that were available because of the pandemic. The AAP has been able to continue to assist their members through this journey. Okay, and you touched on this a little bit already, but what's at stake for children in the November election? Uh, the biggest thing is going to be potentially access to care. We have to continue the Medicaid funding and the child health insurance programs or the CHIP programs, as they're called. Um, preventative care far and wide saves money uh, on the back end. If we don't have access to routine care to preventative care, we are going to have a, a sicker population. Um, and we need to keep children healthy so we have uh, families be healthy. We know children are about 25% of the population, but we say we know they're also 100% of the future. So we need to make sure we're taking care of them now. All right, Dr. Elizabeth Murray, spokesperson for the American Academy of Pediatrics. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for joining us for this session of HD Live, the streaming video service of Health Day News. For more health news, remember to check us out at live.healthday.com. I'm Mabel Jong. Have a safe and healthy day.